I just grabbed some lunch from the favorite nugget and I love the camera. Makes it so easy to back out and watch if people are coming around. So that made it nice and simple for us. Let's go ahead and hop out of here. So you guys might notice that there is a light on my dash, the warning light right there. That's actually for the tire pressure sensors, not for the pressure itself. So technically we are fine on pressure. It's just the sensor is bad, which happens here and there. I don't know if I'm gonna make this. I'm not, I'm not gonna run it. We're about four or five weeks out from getting our new wheels though, which I'm super stoked about. They're gonna completely transform how this car looks. And on Monday next week, this car is gonna change completely as well. It's going in for a wrap. Some of you guys have gotten a sneak peek on Instagram because I kind of shared with some of the, the OG followers that I've recognized. So some people already know what it's gonna look like and they've been giving me feedback and they think you guys are gonna like it as well. So I cannot wait to finally reveal it to you guys. Just know it's gonna be wild. I went outside of my comfort zone on the coloring and stuff, but yeah, just know it's gonna be a crazy, crazy wrap. Yeah, these tires do not like to hook. These are the Goodyear Eagle F1s. Let's see, I gotta get all the way over actually. What fell down? My hand sanitizer fell out. Pulled so much power there that the hand sanitizer just rolled itself on out of my door pocket. While we're sitting at this stoplight, I just wanted to bring it up too on the last video. We were talking about S550 or three valve. Overwhelmingly S550, like really blew me away. I thought more people were gonna be more three valve based but because I was so S197 focused, especially 1314 with the 5.0, but it seems like you guys really would like to see an S550, which is fine with me. It's a whole new chassis, a whole new platform, and we can do a totally different style, maybe like a road course build or something like that. I don't know, but I know the S550s aren't necessarily made to drag race with the IRS. They're more, they were supposed to be more of a handling car. It never happens whenever I'm in my slow car. Yeah, first gear just spins, does nothing. Put the hammer down in first with these tires. It's like they're just, I don't know, dry rotted. <laughs> just does not grip. I'm hoping my next set of tires by Nitto are gonna be nice and grippy though. I will say though, second gear seems to hook pretty good. I mean, you gotta kind of roll into it. You can't just stab it at the high RPMs. I usually shift at like 4,000, 4,500 and then it'll let me go. So yeah, let me let me give these little tires some credit where it's due, but they're not like super fast, sticky tires. So like here's second, 3,000. Little spin, but not too bad actually. Very slow granny shifts, but what can you do? We're just trying to catch up to everybody and make the light. Now some down shifts. Whoa, I heard that like echo off of that FedEx truck. Ah, I parked way out here for this reason to avoid people, but I got an A3 that parked next to me. It's an e-tron, so at least it's a nice car, but I got my Gorilla Glue. I went with the clear one. I also have my sick work truck, which is kind of funny because uh, that couple right there and that real little Ranger and they hopped out and they were like doing this because I think my lip was super close. I don't think they knew I was inside the car because of all the tent. So yeah, that was pretty funny, but it does look like it gets a little bit lower with the 19s up front. I mean, it's pretty close to the ground. So I think she was just commenting on how close the lip was, but dang it, I was out here all alone. Even this guy came. So that guy came and the A3 guy came. So, oh well. We we'll have to get that fixed, but uh, oh, what I was talking about, why I need the Gorilla Glue. So I need this because on my other car, this bumper bracket is like glued. It's like plastic welded on, not just screwed on or anything. So you can't replace it. So it's like popped out right here. I need to like re-glue the bracket to keep it tight. So that's really all it is. But now we gotta go to Harbor Freight because they got way cheaper clamps. The clamps in there were like, I don't know, 15 bucks each. Harbor Freight's like six, so. Let's go ahead and head over there. I will say though, one of the funnier features about this car is watching like older people's reactions to how low it is. They just cannot believe that a car can go up and down like that without looking like a typical low rider, you know, like an old 60s, 70s low rider. Um, so to see a Mustang that's sitting like this close to the ground, 
they hop out they're like kept looking i tried to get it with my phone because i was actually in here like texting back people but i just couldn't get it so it was just pretty funny that's definitely one of my favorite features with the bags especially because i run the lines on the outside so when i air out it has the air sound that's the hiss that all comes right out the back so if somebody's nearby they're gonna look at what the heck just hissed at them it's my car so it's just funny to see that reaction this is why harbor freight is just a godsend for us car guys right these two clamps which are technically six inch clamps right nice and big they have the little trigger so we can clamp them down so i got those two which probably are plenty and i got four of those little baby ones right bam right there the little baby ones probably to help get around those corners and really keep it sucked in I got all of those for $14. So two of these, four of those baby ones, 14 bucks. Literally the cost of one of these at Home Depot. I know it's not the best. You're supporting, you know, some cheaper quality materials and locations, things like that. But let's be real, Harbor Freight has all saved our butts. And sometimes we gotta be smarter with our money because uh, yeah, I just didn't wanna spend about 40 bucks on clamps to fix my stupid bumper. Instead, I'll pay 12 bucks and I'll use these things probably for life because I don't think I'm gonna beat on them that hard. So just a little pro tip. If you don't have a Harbor Freight or if you've never been to Harbor Freight, go there and it'll blow your mind about tool prices. I'm very, very doubtful that one of you guys have not gone to Harbor Freight, but I just wanted to throw it out there. I guess I'll just swap it around so that way you guys are looking at me a little bit so we're not just sitting here at this red light, which I probably won't make because it has a camera on it and I'm not a guy that likes to risk it for a $480 minimum red light camera ticket so i'm gonna go ahead and just roll through here if we make it we made it okay we're good but I, those always kind of give me anxiety i just do not want a freaking 500 ticket that has traffic and all those classes or whatever you have to do jesus christ buddy almost clipped me there in your v6 challenger of the trx i don't know if you guys saw but the ram trx i mean it's hard to miss the wide-bodied supercharged hellcat motor ram truck which i'm not a ram guy but oscar's ram rebel my buddy oscar's ram rebel is pretty dang sick i mean it's well equipped very nice truck rides very nice it would definitely make me second guess getting an f-150 i'm a big ford fan however i just can't just be a blind follower just because it simply has that brand and badge on it if it's a better vehicle you bet your butt i want to get the better vehicle just because I'm logical in that sense. And right now the TRX is kicking the Raptor's butt. I love Raptors, don't get me wrong, but something about a V8 truck with a supercharger, it's even larger, has bigger wheels from the factory, so from stock to stock it looks better. And it has a little bit more features, like literally one of the features I saw on the new TRX that I sent over to my buddy Sabir, is while you're in the air, it'll self-level based on the throttle and brake, like how you would with like an RC car in the air, you can brake or give it more throttle to kick it each way, so that way it's not gonna dig the nose in like a lot of Raptors did. You gotta love when people just brake super hard and turn with no blinker. Another funny thing about that TRX or T-Rex is that it literally on the engine cover, you know how most modern cars, you now open up the hood and it has a little plastic engine cover? Well on theirs, on the TRX, T-Rex, whatever, it has a T-Rex eating a Raptor like engraved into the plastic. So it's totally doing shots fired out to Ford and the Raptor, which brings me to the next port point, which is that the 21 F-150 Raptor or 2022 F-150 Raptor might actually feature the Shelby Predator motor. And that's because of the pressure that Ram did. Now, as much as I'm not a big fan of Challengers and all that stuff, I mean, they're cool cars and they did do a lot for the overall car world because they pushed a lot of manufacturers in a good way that I think that a lot of us benefited from. So for example, the T-Rex, right? I'm gonna call it the T-Rex, sounds way cooler. Uh, the T-Rex, the fact that it has a supercharged V8 and the Raptor doesn't, brought that up as like an argument against the Raptor. So what did the Raptor do? Well, they're gonna answer to that argument and say, well, we have the old, just V8 Raptor. We have the newer EcoBoost Raptor, but the next one, we're gonna make the supercharged Predator Raptor. And now that, that's gonna be a game changer. And that's because finally Ford is bringing back something that's just American. For a long time, they've been pushing the hybrid energy, the turbo EcoBoost, which is great. They're great motors, don't get me wrong. But to bring something just American back with a V8 loud supercharger, 
not the best on fuel economy we already know but to just do it for the sake of i can that's pretty cool and i think that's what dodge's motto has been for a long time now is i'm just gonna do it because we can like why did they put a supercharged v8 into a four-door sedan with a wide body because they can and i think that's beautiful because we all get to benefit from that as a consumer let's go ahead and air up so we don't have to smash the lip another reason why i love the bags got an sti coming at us but really dodge has done a lot for our community as far as pushing for innovation one of those things is being better interiors on trucks for a long time people got away like chevy with a lot of plastic and rattles and stuff which we know is kind of crappy but dodge chrysler that whole company they really upgraded all of their interiors on their trucks suvs on their cars they got leather padded dashes things like that so we've all benefited from that and that's why i think the t-rex and the raptor head-to-head -head competition is going to be awesome because the consumer is going to win we're going to get sick trucks out of this keep in mind they're very expensive they're like ninety thousand dollar trucks but if you're in that bracket to purchase one it's a pretty awesome option and i'm glad that they're doing it because when they compete they just try to one-up each other and that's exactly what's happening or what happened with the camaro and the mustang that's why the gen 2 came out the gen 3 came out they just try to make it better and better if there's no one competing then they just think they have the whole competition won that's why the raptor was kind of untouched for many years there so it's good that they're finally bringing it out and i'm i'm pretty excited about it so let's see if these tires can get us up to speed without spinning our butts off so i'll probably granny shift first go into second and then we'll just hope we'll just hope there's no cars oh i see a car yeah early shutdown on that one plenty of traffic onto the freeway slide behind this little Maserati. dang it so that's pretty much the pull we're gonna get because like i was saying earlier the traffic has gotten pretty bad now so it's basically back to normal there for a few weeks we had zero traffic on the commutes now we're right back to how it was as you guys can see i'm pretty boxed in now with traffic but i did want to hear you guys' thoughts on the trx and raptor so if you guys made it this far let me know would you guys switch brands like are you guys so loyal that you would never switch brands even though there's a better vehicle out there or are you just loyal to where you're like hey i drive a ford i'm gonna drive a raptor or would you just go hey who makes the best truck i'm gonna buy the best truck for the money so I want to hear that. Leave your comments down below. For me, personally, I'd probably just buy the best truck for the money. I'm a slight loyalist with the Mustang. I just love Mustangs. But for the for other things, I guess, I would just go with what's best out there for the money with the most features, reliability, performance, things like that. But as far as the Mustang, you can't tell me any different. The 1314 is one of the best ones out there. On that note, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up right here. So as always, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, then please comment, like, and subscribe to help that YouTube algorithm. And I'll catch you guys next time.